All right, we're recording and it's working. Hey guys, just wanted to um, do a video about um, your food drop bags. And this is particularly aimed at the people doing Hyson, um, the Hyson 105 or the Hyson 60 or even the 37 kilometer distance. Uh, I would like to give you a little breakdown on how you want to um, pack your food because I know lots of people are worried and especially if it's your first time stepping up to a bigger distance and a lot of this information is specifically geared towards the um, Hyson 105 but if you're one of my other athletes who don't live in Adelaide and who are um, just watching in this will come in useful as well because I think there's a few little tips here uh, that, that you might find useful for other races the other thing to sort of think about this is just a way that's worked really effectively for me for a, a number of years and I know a lot of people do something similar but there's so many different approaches so I'll just jump into it so first things first you've got to eat and you know we're getting very close to the run and I know I spend a lot of time when I talk to all of you guys on the phone about we probably spend probably about 40 percent of our conversations are about food and what we're eating on our long runs as I always say what um, the food is the fuel to keep the engine going doesn't matter how good your engine is you need to put fuel in and um, so yeah so this is important so we work out we work on a ratio where we're eating um, for endurance sport now it's not this is sort of a ballpark generally pretty good figure that I work towards some athletes can tolerate more some can only tolerate less we're going to work on this ratio that is 60 grams of carbs per hour okay so that is sort of scientifically figured worked out and it seems to work if you um, think about it that's essentially what you would have if you had say two gels that um, in one hour that's about the um, 60 grams so a gel is around 30 sometimes a little bit less so with that in mind you think okay let's say you ran it really fast and you did the Heisen in 10 hours okay which you, you may win then um, 10 hours that's 600 grams of carbohydrates and that's a a lot of uh, food so and we're talking about carbs I'm, I'm going to avoid talking about um, taking a, a calorie approach to eating or even like thinking about protein I'll tell you maybe later or on at the end of the video I might tell you how to um, what's the word or what to avoid oh I can just say it very quickly avoid things that have got too much fiber avoid things that have got uh, a, any a great deal of protein okay difficult to die one's too easy to digest and the other one is too difficult to digest okay so we don't want to have any toilet accidents um, it's not good not a good look in this uh, in any situation really um, okay so basically what I've done this is how I break it down this is going these guys are going to become your friends so the IKEA bag now this is they're coming in a variety of sizes I put my um, these these are probably pretty a bit too small the ones I'm using today but it's just for a demonstration so here we go so this year with Hyson 105 you can have food you have drop bags at every aid station in fact it's encouraged so it's great and having done the Heisen a number of times, I've got a pretty good idea of the terrain and how long it takes from uh, one section to the next. And so I look at Heisen as just five little races within one big race. And again, this all applies to people doing the shorter distances. You just won't have as many aid stations. So, um, so working on my 60 grams per hour of carbohydrates, uh, from the start line, you need to be eating. So it's a two and a half hour cutoff you're going to feel great in that first few hours. It's the best part of the day. You're fresh, all you've been tapering. So you've got to resist the urge to go too fast, but that's a whole other video. Pacing, we're not going to talk about pacing, but what you do need to do is start eating in that first section. So make sure you've loaded up with probably about an hour and a half worth of food. Okay, so for an hour and a half, I haven't made a bag for this, but you've got your pack. So whether it's a liquid hydration or food, whatever, 60 grams per hour so even if you ate in the first if, um, section you ate a gel and something sweet or savory um, that's fine so you don't have to have a drop bag at the start obviously but you do have to load your food up um, it's important 
to, oh, we'll just get in. So when you get to checkpoint one, I've made up these little tags that I'm going to put into each of my little food drop bags. So this is from checkpoint. So up here, we've got checkpoint one, and then it says 19 kilometers, but that's not right because it's actually the, from the start to checkpoint one, I think is about 16 or maybe 17 kilometers, but I haven't listed that. I've listed how far it is to the next aid station. So when you get to checkpoint one and you pull out your bag, you'll see that it says 19 kilometers. And you go, okay, it's 19 Ks. If it was flat, you could probably do it pretty quick. But we know it's not completely flat. So I've put in, I've sort of looked at that and I thought, well, it might take about two and a half hours. It may take you a bit longer because there are some tricky sections through there. So we're going to go, okay, I'm going to pop this in my bag. in my, And then I'm going to go and I'm going to look up my carbohydrate calculator. Now I've emailed nearly everyone one of these, the carbohydrate calculator. So basically it just tells you, and I've just clicked away from it, it tells you the things that you, how much is in regular foods. So you might have like a banana, for example, you might put a banana in your, uh, in your bag. I wouldn't do it because you can get those at the aid stations. Um, so a banana has 22 grams of carbohydrates, average banana. These are average servings. So one banana, it's like nature's gel. Okay. Um, so things like that. So if you haven't got a carb calculator, send me a message and I'll shoot it. I'll shoot you a copy, but you can Google things as well, but I'm here to help. That's my job. Um, so basically there we go. So you want to load this up with two and a half hours worth of food. So or 150 grams worth of carbohydrates. So read the packets of what you've already got, stick them in. Okay. So, and then we go from there. We, and then the idea is you come into the aid station, you come running in, feeling fantastic because you're super fit and you're awesome. And then you grab your, you might grab a few things at the aid station. That's fine. If there's food, uh, definitely fill your water bottles up. Hydration, that's really important. But again, this is primarily about the food. Then when you go through, you can grab your takeaway bag and you go. This is your takeaway bag. So it's going to be chock-a-block full of your favorite foods, things that you know that you'll eat, things that you've tried and tested in your training. That's why I'm always going on about it. Okay, so there, bang. So there's 150 grams. So that's going to get you, and your goal, your mission is in that following 19 kilometers is to eat everything in this bag, but keep the bag. Okay, so at the end. So you come in, so you run along, you get through, you, you come to the, Checkpoint two. Now, checkpoint two, it's a nice feeling. It's a 30, I think it's the 37 kilometer mark or 35, no, 35 kilometer mark um, in Heysen. And uh, a lot of people, that's where they start to really dip. They still, the, the reality of what you're doing is really kicking in. So in my next bag, I've got this one. It's 22 kilometers from checkpoint two to checkpoint three. You want to put, you think 22 Ks isn't, isn't so bad. It's a really long way when you've already done 30 something kilometers and you've got a long way to go. And it's usually the hardest part of the whole race. All right. So I've put down three hours worth of food there. So 180 grams. You may need a bigger one of these, another a bigger takeaway bag. So that can include a drink or something savory, like a sandwich. Um, you know, happy again, look at the carb calculator to figure out. So that goes boom. Okay. Now you've got your old one. And once you go over the next few hours before, don't eat it all in one hit, eat it over several hours um, before you get to checkpoint three. Now, if you've got food left over at checkpoint three, it's up to you. You can try and neck it and get it all in or don't. If there's something that's not going down well, don't eat it. Just go to something simpler. Okay, but we, food doesn't do us any good if it's just sitting in our bag. Okay, it doesn't, it just is dead weight. You want to eat it. <laughs> and so essentially and then the next thing is because i'm a, you can if you want to chuck this out that's up to you chuck it out at the aid stations when it's empty but i think they're really useful and you can use them for your next race is just if put the empty ones once you're done put in that drop bag in, in that bag and then boom you can recycle don't we love that okay and then i'm going to go through the next couple of checkpoints okay so between checkpoint two and checkpoint three you've got um, the start of the 60. So so that's I'm not 100% certain how far in that is, but basically 
So from here on, things apply to you 60K runners, if you're one of them. And, um, but you know, there's, I'm going to talk to each and every one of you before then anyway. So, but at the moment, I'm sort of addressing the 105K runners. Um, so the next section is checkpoint three. You're coming out, there's some more runnable sections. It's a little bit easier and it's 18 kilometers. So I've figured out it's about, it's going to take me probably about two and a half hours. And again, you need to work it out. And something to really take note of, if you have uh, run it in the um, practice runs, and I know some of you have run, done all the training runs, and so you know the course, have a look at how long it took you to do those training runs and go, okay, that section took me three hours, but it was I was pretty, I was in good shape and I felt fresh. So maybe add an extra half hour to your time, okay? So it's better to have a little bit too much food because you don't want to get hungry. As soon as you get hungry, the wheels will start falling off. All right, so 150 grams. So get through that and you can, um, at this point, your stomach, hopefully our stomach hasn't turned and we don't start feeling um, too, too much fatigue and palate fatigue, which is, if you don't know what palate fatigue is, it's where you, um, you, you just can't eat anything no matter how good it tastes, okay? And so um, we'll see how we go there. And that's why when we are eating, we're nibbling. We're nibbling the whole time. Have an eating schedule. You don't eat, um, you won't make it. I'm going to say that again and again. Um, I just forgot something else. Okay, the beauty of coming, when you get through checkpoint three, that 18K, you get to checkpoint four, and it's the best checkpoint because um, you get to checkpoint four after 18 kilometers, and from checkpoint four to the next aid station is only nine kilometers, and it's a really flat nine. It's the easiest section. It's a really lovely section. So you know, if you get to checkpoint four, it's not far to checkpoint five. And guess what? So, but you will be going a bit slower. So I've allowed an hour and a half. On a good day, we could probably all do it under an hour. Okay, but you're going to be tired at this point. You've got 70 plus kilometers in the legs. And so this is where you want to have a treat. Something that's some, your favorite food. I quite often have ginger beer or even Red Bull. And, um, but just have... And like you look at the carbohydrate and the sugar quantity in those drinks as well, and there's quite a lot. I'm not going into specifics. You can Google that or you can look on the carb calculator. Okay. And then, you and I mean, if you've got food left over and you haven't eaten enough, you might not need to take much of this. Okay. But definitely just don't leave your food behind. Um, eat some, try and eat. And the idea of these is to make it so you get in and out of the aid stations really quickly. All right. Because you, it's very easy to spend too long at aid stations eating food and chatting to people. It's, it's okay. You want to get into the aid station, fill up your water, maybe grab a couple of chips. If they've got some delicious food that you can't go past, by all means, grab it. But um, don't have too much sugar. Um, mainly, I've got no problem with sugar, but we save our sugar sort of to closer to the end so we don't have a big sugar crash. And uh, I find once I start eating sugar, in a run, in a race, I find it really hard to go back to eating savoury things. And savoury things are really what we want to think about. So, because they, they will carry us. And then, of course, from when you get to checkpoint five, we've got, um, I've calculated that it might, I've allowed three hours. So, working on 60 grams, 180 grams for 18 kilometres. Obviously, you're going to be pretty tired by then. Um, some of you will need a bit more, some of you need a bit less. But this is a good rate and when and then boom and you've got all of those and look at that so now all i have to do is go along and do the maths and this is the fun fun part is you just start loading it up with the food you may need a bigger bag um the idea is again when you run through the aid station you get these you fill your water bottle up and you're off okay short sweet um and then as you're walking even you can start going okay i've got a couple of gels i'll put them in this part of my pack I'll run along, put them in this part. I've got a sandwich here. I'm going to eat that now. Okay. So that's what the whole point of it is. All right. So I think that's enough. This video has gone on way longer than I wanted it to. So I hope that helps, guys. Okay. I'll talk again soon. Cheers.